So it's got a big hefty magnet on the bottom of there. Um, it's actually fun whenever I have to use this on somebody's car who's never seen one of these before, you just <laughs> stab the roof. Uh, <laughs> You pop it on uh, either the hood, or some people do it on the top of the car, wherever you find it most appropriate. Um, and the magnet will definitely hold it on. You can do highway driving with it. Um, it's not coming off. Um, the great adventure, sorry? Does it mark the, uh, the paint? Uh, no, so I've taken it on and off of our car a bunch. Uh, it's never marked it. It has a really nice uh, thin little plastic section that hangs out over the edge of the metal um, to make sure it doesn't mark up. If you get some sand or something marked underneath it and you try to slide it around on your hood, you will probably mark it up. But um, for on and off, I don't think you've ever had a problem either, Bob? It'll, it'll mark it eventually. Okay. It, uh, it helps to be short so you don't see the top of the car. If <laughs> somebody dealing with it on vans, that's fine. It, um, just the actual tiny, tiny movement as you're moving mm -hmm. is going to ground uh, uh, highway dust under the paint. You won't notice it. Uh, and you can uh, you can wax it off, but it uh, if you look just right, you can see it, of course. Okay. Nothing All right. serious. So, um, other people, when they're really dedicated to their hobby, you can actually get ones that uh, mount on either kind of the way that um, old clamps do. Um, if you're working like in woodwork or something like that, uh, you can just do them on like that, or even screw it directly on if you're that kind of person. Um, I prefer the magnet because you can just pop it on and off, and you never have to worry. But um, you know there are other options for mounting. For home use, I've actually got uh, one of these here. This is a really nice uh, example of an antenna you can make, actually. Uh, one of the things about the basic license, I did say you're not allowed to make a radio with just a basic license. Um, you have to have the advance for that, but anyone can make an antenna. Uh, there is no restrictions on who does that, basic or advanced. Uh, this one is actually a professionally made one. Um, it's got a little higher quality to it. Um, I haven't made it, but uh, I know a lot of people who have made these as their first antenna. The great thing about this is this actual setup here is uh, ladder line. We'll learn about that in a bit. Um, not this week, but a few weeks from now. It's just a type of coax. So uh, basically what happens is down here, you've got the connector. You can hook it up to some coax, like I've got right here. So you, of course, you just plug it in. You screw it down. And we'll be learning a lot more about coax and different feed lines and stuff in a later section. But um, this, you great, you can hang it up in a window. Um, I typically do, so I've got a curtain rod, of course. You put a little bit of uh, felt or like a zip tie or something on the end, suspend it up there. And it's a great place to uh, put up a nice antenna. Um, it's not the best antenna. Um, in fact, this one will outperform this any day. But uh, it is great for tossing it up kind of in a pinch. And uh, because it is so flexible, you can, I mean, Bob told me you could run maybe, for example, some garden cane up through it um, and just plant it somewhere. Um, so what would you say? Easy, easy stuff. Uh, don't put it inside a PVC tube. Hmm. Oh. It, it, it'll, uh, it'll detune it. And the PVC hmm. is slightly conductive. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> just enough Ed VHF to bother it, yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh, don't put it in PVC tube then. But uh, other than that, I found it's great because it is so flexible. You don't have to worry about, for example, stabbing the roof with it, um, typically. <laughs> so um, that's it from me and my end. Uh, if you wanted to go ahead, Bob, uh, show them what you sure. brought. Bits and pieces. I was doing more of a hands-on thing here. It's um, uh, Everything we've seen so far uh, is right. in the VHF, very high frequency. Please, please put your finger up if, if I say something in three-letter acronyms like BFO and VFO and things like that. I, I, I'll try not to slip. Uh, everything you've seen so far is very high frequency or uh, ultra-high frequency. That's uh, in the two-meter band or the uh, 440 megahertz, 70-centimeter uh, band. Uh, our, we have uh, two repeaters built into the purple woods that uh, work with that. Or you can use these uh, handy talkies directly to each other. The handy talkies have two modes. Most radios these days have two modes to them. There's a VH, sorry, there's a variable frequency oscillator mode where you can pick the frequency either by turning a knob or by punching punching the buttons on the front for the frequency you want or that one over there. Or there's a memory mode and you can pick which memory you want by either pushing buttons again or by turning a, a knob on the front and you can load all the repeaters into the radio and uh, usually you can do it by hand or through a uh, computer program with a cable hooked up to it and that will allow you to access different repeaters automatically and easily. There's a uh, microphone there with a with dual tone multi-frequency DTMF microphone that can be used right there uh, in, uh, in this type of equipment to uh, punch in tones to the system. The system we had 
went down a couple of days ago and we haven't got a backup since. I heard from the, uh, if, you, if you hit it, you, know, you won't get the, uh, uh, go ahead. you won't get the, uh, the courtesy tones back. Nope, no, no. Can you get anything? No, I didn't get anything. So, we will actually be going back and forth on a bunch of these so you get to play around with a little bit. Oh! You didn't get the beep at the end for the computer. Yeah. So there's there are two dumb repeaters up there now. Let's see if I can get NAA in there. <laughs> First you take this on lock. <laughs> nice thing to have on a lock because you hit it like that, you don't know where you are. Yeah. And you turn this in the memory mode, to uh, VE3NAA, our other repeater, and see if we can get that. Now this is UHF. <laughs> and it didn't work. <laughs> no, nope, not here. Um, the, uh, there are other modes, uh, a single sideband of CW that some people do use on the very high and ultra high frequencies, but they're mostly on the lower frequencies. The only piece of advice I would try to give you on these things is that if you are going to go the route that a lot of people have gone and get these Baofeng type radios made in China for about $50 after you've taken the course, remember that they are commercial radios, they're not ham radios. These things, if I punch in a frequency to go on to, uh, to uh, aircraft or boats or police, I can listen to them, but if I press the button, it'll say error, I can't transmit. You try it on a bow phone, and you can transmit, and you can interfere with the taxis and the aircraft mm -hmm. and the, all these people, you see, mm -hmm. because they don't know what you're going to use it for. The other thing about the bow phones is that you don't get the tones and the automatic offsets. You've got to set up everything manually. Mm -hmm. So they're cheap to buy, but they're hard to use. Okay. Once you've got to set up and put in memory, they're great. Mm -hmm. you do, do go on the spot and say, i got, I got a 147.1 tool. I can do it on that just by punching it, and it'll pick up the tones automatically and work. It won't work on a dial phone that way. How do you spell that? B-A-O-F-E-U-N-G -E or something? I think it, I think, yeah, I think it was B-A-U, but yeah, it's Baofeng Baofeng. is the way it's pronounced. It's, it's an inexpensive uh, radio company in, in China that makes a ton of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And people use them for everything, which they're supposed to, but if you're going to use them for ham, there's a lot of tricks to them. Yeah. Now, in the HF world, high frequency, uh, first of all, a two meter antenna would be about 19 inches long. This one works on two meter and, and uh, 70 centimeters. A yeah, you credit on the side a, here. A, so you can see a, a, a uh, an antenna for high frequency work. If you're going down and you guys are going to learn all the frequencies and you're going to know all the bands and so on for this course, uh, starting at 160 meters, if it was a half wave antenna. That is, it's a, a dipole, and antennas only come in two types, basically. There's the, the, uh, the, the dipole antenna, balanced, and there's a monopole antenna, like this, sticking up with a ground plane under it, like a car, okay. or the earth itself, or radials. Okay. The half-wave antenna, at uh, 160 meters, is about 260 feet long. For 440 megs, it's about six and a half inches long. Okay? So it really depends on what frequencies you want to operate on and the amount of space that you've got to put antennas into. You can get shortened antennas, which you can obviously on cars and in houses, for high frequency, but you're getting into coils. I don't particularly like coils in antennas. They lower the efficiency, but they allow you to put an antenna into a smaller space. Now, in high frequency, you have different, the mode that you're operating here normally on very high frequency and ultra high frequency is the FM mode. It's narrow band frequency modulation. In high frequency stuff, the old fashioned short wave radio, you're normally operating either in amplitude modulation from the old days, AM, single sideband, upper or lower sideband, or Morse code, they call it continuous wave. A radio like this, the reason I brought this one tonight is because it's old enough that it's got the knobs and the features on the front. A new radio these days for this <laughs> looks like that and has a face on it like this and you can't really see yeah. yeah. And you have to know menus on it like you would on a camera. Actually, I'll send this around. 
so you can actually see that there's no labeled button on it. When it comes on, the entire screen tells you what each button does and function, menu, key, setting. If you hold it, push once or push twice or push and hold, yeah. you have three functions in each button and so on. Yeah. This one actually has a knob for each function. This thing doesn't do everything, <laughs> but it does most things. And if you're going to, to, to purchase a high frequency radio, you'll have to know in advance what you want it to do because they all come with different features and you, you have to know what you want built in. This particular one has a power supply built in. It takes 110 volts in, puts 12 volts out, plugs the 12 volts back into the back, and then operates on 12 volts. So that you could actually run this in a car or a truck off a 12 volt system or out of the house on a 110 volt system. It has a built-in speaker, for instance, most radios used to have separate speakers that match the same case and set outside them. It does not have a built-in keyer uh, for using it in Morse code. It has a side tone generator in Morse code that, as this thing is a quarter of a century old, is gone, it's off by one note. And you use that, yeah, I know, you use that to set to zero beat the other person that you're listening to, so you're right on the same frequency that he's on, and we'll show you how that works in the course. You cannot transmit or receive on exactly the same frequency, believe it or not, on Morse code, or you wouldn't hear the other person at all. If you want to hear an 800 hertz tone, you have to tune off his frequency by 800 hertz, and so on. If you had separate transmitters and receivers with two tuning knobs, it's real easy. You just tune it until you hear it. With this, it's a bit of a trick. You listen to the other person and then you adjust the tone from the other person so it matches a spot tone that you have on here. <clears throat> that you have on here. You tune the other person for that. When it's uh, time for a uh, single sideband for voice, you just tune it so it sounds naturally. So what we've got here is, hopefully, a transmitter. First of all, it's hooked up with a microphone, AC, a keyer, and no antenna. I've got instead a little dinky dummy load antenna from the old CB days. Plug into the back so I can only transmit a couple of feet on this thing, just from the leakage coming through the case. I even tried it earlier on with a piece of coaxial cable that, that, uh, that leaks, by the way. Uh, it's down there. And it was too powerful and overloaded this radio's front end. So we'll see what we can do here on voice and CW, hopefully. I can hear some guys on here. Yeah, I could hear it. Yeah. yeah. I hope we don't go over top of these guys. And on Morse code, just press the press it into the CW mode. We started off with the right frequencies here. An older set will drift 200 hertz per hour after warm up. Believe it or not, a new set won't drift at all. They have a, a, a crystal that's in an oven, and it just preheats it and prevents it. That's just this side tone generator. What do we got here for getting over there? If anything, uh, first of all, have to turn on the Vox, and I'll go through these controls with you. So I'm transmitting from here over to there. That type of thing. Um, in the old days, you had to throw a switch to turn over the antenna and turn this on and turn the receiver off. And all, these days, it's all automatically, and it's all done solid state. You don't hear big antenna, big relays snapping, and all that rest of that stuff. Um, so uh, this this keyer determines the speed that you're going to be sending the uh, the, the uh, Morse code signal. Or really so. That's about 22 words a minute here. The single sideband uh, system built in will allow you to transmit an upper or lower sideband without a carrier and reinsert the carrier back into the receiver just the same way you do for Morse code. And that's how you get the, the beep noise or how you get the audio. Let's see if this works. 
Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, the difference in the voice up and down as you adjust frequency? Hmm. You have to zero beat the other person right on it. You get that sound that sounds like a Donald Wilbur's Donald Duck up or, or Star Wars down. They did that on purpose in the original Star Wars of the X Fighters. Hello, test, hello, test, hello, test, like that. Like that. Um, you will be transmitting and receiving exactly the same frequency on single sideband. Now, as to how this thing actually works or what features to look for, there are other radios like this that you could buy today that cost a fortune, and they are marine radios, and they will transmit at all uh, shortwave frequencies, same as this will, but they don't have these noise fighting features on the front. They have absolute stability instead, and they cost a huge amount of money, and I've never seen a ham actually use one. And I guess uh, these radios could legally, illegally be opened up and used on other frequencies as well, like marine frequencies, but uh, that's against the law. They want more stable equipment on marine. So what you end up with in a ham radio is a transmitter and receiver in the same package. You have, uh, well, let's just go through a few of these things. You have uh, oddball stuff like uh, Vox here. I had to turn that Vox on to make it transmit so that the keyer would key this. And Vox is normally used in a, it's not turned up right high enough right now, thank God. So that uh, with a desk microphone, you don't have to squeeze the button, you just talk. And when you talk, it transmits. When you stop, you listen. You can adjust Vox, the delay. Vox activated? Yep, voice act, uh, Vox voice. Operated exchange. Re, uh, exchange. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, well, this operator relay was exchanged in the. Yeah. Thanks. You, so this one's push to talk or voice activated. And there's a delay as to how long you want it before it comes back into the receive mode because you're using a uh, half duplex. That means you transmit when the other person listens, they transmit while you listen. You say over, tell them. You have compression on this thing that will allow you, you know you're listening to TV and the uh, commercials come blasting through so loud they're actually no no louder they're not the amplitude is no higher but the audio is compressed you can do that with a ham radio as well to make you louder than the other guy but you you have to be very careful and these things have a little thing called monitor built in so you can put a set of earphones in here talk in the microphone adjust the compression level and see what you actually sound like going out on the air. It's a good idea. I don't have that feature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. The only way I get it is I say, how do I sound? And somebody yeah. says, you sound terrible. I say, what it's, should I do? And they say, I don't know. That's what we used to do in the old days is trade stations. Go to the other guy's house and talk back and forth. Yeah. Um, noise blanking. And this one works quite well to take out ignition noise and, and line noise when you're listening. Uh, power switch, uh, transmit, receive switch. If you wanted to do it manually, I think they should be chopped off because it's too easy to leave it on, turn the thing on, and you're transmitting all the time and don't know it. Um, you have a meter here that has multiple functions like a standing wave ratio. We'll go through that on one of the lessons as an external SWR meter. Uh, power output, automatic linearity control, yeah, the amount of compression, you can see it here. IC is current on the collector of the final transistor and VC is voltage on the collector of the final transistor. On the receive side you have audio gain which is just a whole dear volume control and RF gain, radio frequency gain up front. You also have a squelch control because this can be used on 10 meters FM believe it or not and there are repeaters on 10 meters FM. You don't want to be listening to that hiss in the background all the time. You've also got microphone gain. I had to, uh, I couldn't find the original microphone. I had to get a trucker's microphone with a little audio amplifier built in. And I found that a facet halfway, and this is halfway. It uh, works out perfectly. Um, RF power out. I can't go more than five watts at the moment because that little dummy load won't take it, but this will put out 100 watts. All of your modes here on buttons. So it's AM and FM, CW, CW narrow, that's the Morse code, listening in narrow, single sideband, single sideband reversed. And the lower frequencies, below 10 megahertz on the ham bands, you're in lower sideband. Upper, a higher frequency than that, you're in upper sideband. 
These also operate a bunch of filters. This is a quadruple conversion receiver, believe it or not, in this antique. And it has filters for each type for AM, FM, CW, CW narrow. And you can hear it by the way they sound. And you can't hear a thing. Even no signal. Even for the hiss you should be able to hear. There's your difference between CW and CW there is about a is, is a, uh, a mechanic so this one uses crystal filters and you can pick one signal from a whole mess of other signals. That's the whole idea behind filters. Modern sets don't use that. They use digital signal processing in the uh, intermediate frequency section of the set. Not in the, uh, you don't want one that's in the audio section. You want it as close to the front end as possible. They stick a computer in there. It does it all for you. And there's a little meter on the front and it just shows you you can narrow right down to about a 25 cycle slice of the atmosphere. And listen to that. And everything above that and below that is rejected if you want. Or just the width of the human voice, 300 to 2700 cycles per second. And uh, reject everything else. Nicely done. On this side, transmit in, uh, in receive independent what's it an XIT receiver you like what they stand for you you uh, you, you uh, have one VF variable frequency oscillator on this to adjust the frequency but if the guy coming towards you has separate transmitters and receivers he may not be transmitting and receiving on the exact same frequency so you can adjust this to bring him in on one frequency while you're adjusting, uh, while you're sending on a, an adjacent frequency. And it can be anywhere you like. And the same on the transmit side. Uh, let's do a bunch of filters. Ah, pass band tuning. If you have, a, if you have signals in here within the IF intermediate frequency range and you're listening to somebody here Nice, you tune them in, okay? and then somebody else comes along and interferes with them. You can actually adjust this passband frequency tuning and move the interfering signal to the edge while the good signal is still within the passband. Nice idea. You, hmm. can, you can just roll a guy right out and just listen to the one signal. Does it work well in practice? Uh, yeah, if there's only one signal, it's interfering. Yeah, if you have 46 guys in there, you're not going to make it. And notch. There's a notch filter built into this thing that if somebody is putting a dead carrier out, you can actually tune it and notch it out while you're still talking to the other person. On the top, you have a RF amplifier built in for receive or, a, uh, or, or a, an attenuator if the guy is too strong coming in. And you have a marker. Let's see if this thing works. You're not going to find this in a modern set. In the good old days, to make sure that you weren't transmitting outside a ham frequency, you had to pass a test by law that showed no, that you knew how to adjust the transmitter. And what you did, you take the receiver and you tune it to WWV, WWVH, or CHU, say at 15 megahertz, and you, you're right on the money. Your set's warmed up, and there's a crystal oscillator built in here. And you can adjust it here by calibrating the crystal oscillator to WWV so that it zero beats it. Now you know your crystal calibrator is good. Then you adjust your receiver like we just did and now we know that your receiver is right on the money. And then you adjust your transmitter and now you know your transmitter is right on the money because you can hear yourself back in the receiver. That's the way it's done. Modern sets, they're so good they don't use that stuff at all. They're right dead on the money to start with. You don't need that uh, frequency standard from WWV. The meter, of course, has different ranges built in. Uh, we went through and different scales on the face. Every set's different. There's a way to adjust 
they have multiple controls. You've got ways to adjust the, the different bands. And this particular brand, you press the band button in and you use the tuning. And it takes you right here through all the different hand bands. Okay. Once you're in within the hand band that you want, take it out and you can adjust up and down in here. Any you try, Glenn's trying to tell us something I can't. Give me that bloody battery. <laughs>